Every once in a while, I get a day where I can hold my head up without it being really difficult. And when that happens, I immediately get super ambitious. Of course I can apply for a master's program. I'm sure in a few months I'll be able to work enough to cover the cost. Of course I can start working a full-time job. I've barely been able to maintain two to five scheduled hours in a week for the past two years, but no biggie. Of course I can make a mega base out of ice. Let's build a giant flying machine based farm to get the ice super easily. It'll make the whole process so smooth, except it will break. And by the time I get to that point, I'm actually going to be back in school. <sighs> Why did I do that to myself? Here's the thing though. For me, I might have an okay day every once in a while. And well, I've always wanted to do everything. So when my body isn't actively pinning me down, I shoot into high activity. Which, of course, inevitably, and usually almost immediately, leads to a big ol' crash. And for me, a crash often ends up with me not so much as being able to sit up in bed, which is all really frustrating for someone who thrives on being overly busy. Now, making Minecraft videos is a lot more low impact for me than most activities. It brings a lot of my interests together, and it's flexible, so I can do it on my own schedule. But dang if I don't feel inadequate at that sometimes still. When I'm feeling a little better, I make plans to do big projects that I'm excited about, and then the grind to get that project done stretches out far longer than I ever imagined. It's discouraging that my actual capacity doesn't match my excitement and ambition. I'm still trying to figure out how to balance making high quality videos that have the projects that I get excited about with the limited amount of time I can actually put into them, because there are plenty of days where I feel like I can't drag myself to do anything that feels remotely productive. And like, I can't stand not being productive. It feels like I'm physically melting if I'm not doing something. It's actually a little bit of a problem. I'm working on that. But, if anything, I hold myself to a higher standard when I'm tired because for decades I've internalized the idea that I just need to pull myself up by my bootstraps and that I'm worthless if I don't meet certain standards of productivity which were not built for someone like me. As I've improved as a Minecrafter, the skills themselves have gotten easier, I can build faster, I can redstone more effectively, it doesn't take as much effort or time. But some of these projects can drag on for so much longer than they would for abled people with the same amount of potential Minecraft time, or time for other things, available in a week, because I spend so much of that time taking it slow, having to go lay down, and having to take frequent longer breaks. When I have a particularly bad low-energy flare-up, I start losing my ability to do basic things, and when people comment on the fact that I haven't done a relatively simple task, whether in real life or in Minecraft, my response is usually that I'm tired. And here's the thing, when I say I'm tired, it doesn't mean that I've had a bad night with less rest. It doesn't mean I'm sleepy. If I were describing my symptoms the way an abled person would if they experienced this, I would describe myself as inexplicably tired all the time, but I can't have that as my default state of being because that makes other people uncomfortable. So when I say I'm tired, it means that I'm struggling to sit up at all. I can't face the thought of doing anything that takes thought. It feels like my head is both floating and a lead weight that I can't pick up from my pillow or support as I force myself to go about my day. It means that my limbs are heavy and limp, that I have very little grip strength, that my joints are extra super wobbly and even more prone to subluxation. And to be fair, I usually feel like this most of the time anyways, but on my bad days it's all of those symptoms at once, dialed up to 11. And guys, my health is so much better than a lot of other people with chronic illness type disabilities. I can actually walk around my apartment. I can work. Barely, but I can. Technically. I can eat food most of the time. I don't need a feeding tube. And even though those things are true, and I have it better, that doesn't mean that the lack of energy on top of my other physical issues isn't debilitating or doesn't significantly limit me even at the best of times. But we live in a world where even the most disabled person has to become a shining, saintly symbol of overcoming every obstacle that stands in their way, and every person, abled or not, is expected to be amazing and talented all the time. I have, on the odd occasion, received comments about not doing impressive enough work in a video, which like, 
one, not really the point. I'm here to have fun and a grounding activity that lets me interact with other people. But also, two, I'm not physically able to produce at the level that some people can. Which is okay, because every person has different experiences to begin with. That's just part of being human. And no one should be judging anyone for working at their own capacity. At the end of the day, in this corner of content creation, it's also literally just a game. So let us do what we can and what we enjoy. And if you can't say something nice about it, just don't comment. That's Human Decency 101. This seems like a good time to remind everyone that often, that type of comment comes from people who don't actually put work or effort into the thing you are doing themselves. Like your Uncle Joe, who's an armchair women's sports critic but has never so much as stepped foot in the gym himself. I've spent most of my life working in and around highly skilled fields, and let me tell you, in most cases, the people who have developed a high degree of skill in their craft will not criticize you for starting out and learning and doing the best you can in your own work. The ones who will hate on you are the ones who don't particularly work on the skill set or have never even tried at all, or have problems with their own self-esteem and see you as a threat, not a comrade. And they're not the ones whose opinions are worth listening to. Just be kind to each other. You never know what someone is dealing with and how it affects how they might meet your expectations. And my friends, remember that at the end of the day, you don't need to meet anyone's expectations but your own. So keep those expectations realistic so you don't burn out, and try to let the mean-spirited comments go. Other people's cruelty does not define you, and neither do your limits.